thank you all for coming to this uh, little presentation here. Um, traditionally, at the uh, Oslo USR meetup, we have a semi light hearted uh, meetup event in December, and uh, this year is no different. So, today I'll be talking a bit about how to wrap packages in R with the DevTools package and its little helpers. First of all, before I go into the presentation itself, there are some resources that are incredibly valuable. There is a great book about writing R packages from Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan that is freely available at this uh, website here currently being worked on the second edition. It's a wonderful read, lots and lots of information in there, a lot more in depth, a lot more in detail than what I will be presenting. What I'll be presenting will be more geared towards novices who might think about doing their first R package. Also, I'd like to say that there is a very great video from Tom Mock and Josiah Perry on package building with uh, DevTools and use this more geared towards uh, tidyverse style packages, but an excellent watch. So if you haven't seen this one and have one and a half hours spare, this is almost mandatory watching. Again, a lot more in depth than uh, what I will present here. So what is the motivation for starting to uh, to write a package here and maybe i've been in the pandemic uh, a bit too long but i think this uh, this little uh, picture here sums up all the motivation that you need uh, to write a package because we've all been there that we started writing our own functions putting these functions into different projects and then sourcing the r or dot r files left and right, losing overview, et cetera. So it, all of that painful, painful exercise can be uh, eradicated by writing functions as packages and have everything as transparent and reproducible as possible. Um, the other part of the motivation why I give this presentation, and that's also reflected in this picture, is that I thought I'll surely have enough time to prepare for a meetup presentation in the middle of December. Shame on me. But then in the middle of December, we often ask ourselves the question for very practical purposes. When's Christmas? Like, how many days are left between now, today, and Christmas. How, how much longer until Christmas? And then I thought to myself, well, true what I saw on Twitter the other day, right? Um, both Hadley Wickham and myself could write an R package. So why not write an R package that tells us how many days are left until Christmas? What I'll present in the next few slides here is very heavily based on an RStudio type of workflow. So why most of this will supposedly also work with like plain base R or even command line R. I developed all of this in RStudio and RStudio provides a, a whole plethora of convenience features also for package development. When we have to uh, talk about package development, we inevitably have to talk about the DevTools package. Maybe some of you are familiar with it already. Uh, the aim of DevTools is to make package development easier by providing R functions that simplify and expedite common tasks. If you're a non-native English speaker like myself, you don't know what expedite means, but so be it. The DevTools package itself used to be one large cohesive package until two and a half, three years ago when a conscious uncoupling took place, which means that a very large package was then transformed into lots and lots of smaller 
packages. There's a funny story, by the way, about the phrase conscious uncoupling. So if you go to that website and look where that comes from, that's, that's a good one. So those of you that have been developing our packages maybe a couple years ago know about DevTools, but DevTools then has transformed into all of these packages on the right-hand side here uh, by today, which is still DevTools that's still very much in existence, but then we have packages for testing and test that. Roxygen 2 for documentation, remotes for installing, package build for building the package, package load for loading the package, our command check, rev that check, session info, use this. There is a lot. So, sorry, let's get started. Now, one way to start creating a package is with the use this package. And there is a great function called create package. And just as a reminder, what we are trying to do here is actually figure out how many more days are left before Christmas. And we can either do it with what I've been saying, the use this function, create package, or we can go into our studio, create a new project, and it offers you directly the option to create a new package. And you can even say that it should be created with a Git repository. One of the first things that I would recommend when you start making a package is to immediately set everything up for version control. And for me, this always means Git. There are two great functions from the use this package called use Git and use GitHub respectively that set up both Git and GitHub. And all of this is really no big magic, uh, but it makes life so much easier. Use Git, as you see here on the screen, adds a lot of new files, adds a lot of new uh, information to the project. And in the next step, use GitHub links all of this to your GitHub account, and you can then start pushing your changes to your uh, GitHub repository, and it's open for the world uh, to use. Now, of course, this is not uh, a presentation about Git or version control, but I'd just like to point you to the wonderful Happy Git with R website from Jenny Bryan. That's really a incredible, incredible resource. And just to emphasize on this, when using our Studio, Git functionality can actually be uh, executed in a point and click type manner, which uh, if you're not really officially trained in coding like myself, uh, this makes life a lot easier. So now we've set everything up to make a package. So let's talk a bit before we start talking about functions, let's talk a bit about structure, right? And packages come with several folders, and I'll just highlight two of uh, three of these folders. Now, the R folder, the BAN folder, and the tests folder. So the R folder contains all R functions that your package is supposed to have. The MAN uh, folder contains all the documentation for the functions. This is basically where the help files are. And then the tests folder and subfolder contain the tests for the package functions. We'll talk about tests in just a quick second. That was now a bit on the folder structure. Now let's look at the file structure, at least on the root level, what we have there. We have two ignore files, git ignore and our build ignore. These are uh, information files that uh, that tell git and r respectively what to ignore uh, when pushing to git or when building the package. There's the important description file we'll talk about, license, always a big issue. The namespace, there's uh, nowadays a good practice to include a news file and of course a readme file. So now we want to create a function. And as, as a recap, we want to figure out when the next day of Christmas is. 
And for this, I would recommend, at least in the beginning, to use the function use this and then use r, and then the name of the function you want to create, because then it sets up all the necessary folders for you. And this is just a sneak peek of what I envision the function to do. So after I load the package, in this case, it's called once Christmas, I run a function called once Christmas, and this function tells me how many days are left until Christmas. As I said, we use the use r function from the use this package to set everything up, and it comes with a bunch of uh, additional information uh, here, for example, call use test to create a matching test file, uh, which is a great feature that most use this functions have. They provide like additional useful information when you run them. In this case, we'll come back to tests a bit later. So here I've been writing a, a small little R script. Uh, Nothing too crazy, even though it looks a bit crowded. The first bulk you see here from uh, line 17 to 27 essentially double checks that the date is a date. Uh, then we check which year is now and which uh, what the date is for this year's Christmas. And then we check if the next Christmas falls in this year or the next year. And based on that, we create a small message in lines 42 to uh, 48, which will then be displayed. Again, as I said, maybe not the most useful package, but it's, uh, it's a neat thing to have. When we talk about functions and functionality in packages, we have to talk about documentation. And the Roxygen 2 package, that is part of the DevTools suite of packages, provides really, really neat functionality to include documentation in your R files as you, as you prototype them. And it automatically creates uh, the manual folder and also the help files, and it updates the namespace. So in the same R file that I uh, have been using to specify the function here, I can actually include all the important information for the documentation of the code. You see the first 14 lines here in the script look very similar to regular R comments with the hash symbol, but there's a little tick at the end of it. And uh, that specifies that this is a Roxygen uh, type of comment. And you see that, for example, in the first row, there's this at title and then days until Christmas. And that translates directly to the title of the help file. Then there is a description. You can describe every parameter. As a matter of fact, you should be describing every parameter. You can offer details, uh, be clear about what it returns. There's information on the author, the examples. But also you can uh, and you should specify which non-base R functions your package uses. In this case, the function that we uh, wrote uses uh, four functions from the Lubridate package, and that's then um, specified under the import from category. And at the last row, or rather in row 14, we specified that the when's Christmas function should be an export in the namespace. And just to show you that this, all of this will translate into what you see now. So an actual help file that you can and others can use. So I think this is really, really, really helpful when starting to work with packages. I also said that the uh, Roxygen2 Roxygenize functionality immediately takes care of the namespace. And you can actually see this when you open the namespace file here, um, that it gives you this little warning, this document is read only. And we see that the when's Christmas function is exported. And we see that uh, we import four functions from 
the Lubridate package. So this is great. Now we talked about tests here and tests are, tests are a delicate topic. Uh, everyone knows that writing tests is extremely important and can save you a lot of pain, but also writing tests can be a bit cumbersome and it takes a bit of effort to write a test, especially after you finish, you know, defining the functions, uh, etc. To invest the extra time to write tests may seem like some lost time, but it it always pays off, and you should always write tests. And a very simple way to get started with uh, writing tests is again to let the use this package to do all the dirty work at least the initial dirty work here with the use test function and then specifying from which uh, function to test from. And it will create a tests folder and then a subfolder in there and a test file itself. Now I should say now that uh, within the dev tools or rather use this framework, currently there is only support for the test that test package. There is also another package out there, or there are several other packages out there, I should say. For example, Tiny Test, which is a really great package, which is unfortunately not yet supported by Eustis, but please feel free to explore here. Um, this is by no means meant to be a very exhaustive presentation. Uh, Rayo, can yes. I interrupt for a second? We've yes, got please. A couple of questions. Yes. Uh, of so, firstly, so when you start a project, it's often right. unclear what you really want to have as mature content or what must be just exploratory uh, and what sort of content that shares delivered say. So in your experience, at what point would you recommend to start wrapping up these exploratory scripts into packages? <laughs> well, very good questions. And, and I'm afraid the, the honest answer is it depends. Um, but that's probably not the answer that was uh, that's useful. There is this rule of thumb for myself. If I start using a handwritten function in two or more other scripts within the same project, th that's usually when I when I start thinking about turning this into a package. Thinking about it, I said. Um, it's not always that it that it actually matures into a real small package, but sometimes it does. It's it really depends on on your project uh, and your needs also. Like mm -hmm. often when when we think of package development in in the context of, of work and collaboration, right? Uh, then it's obviously something where other people could benefit from. So then there is an immediate incentive to make sure that we can share uh, the project and the functionalities of the uh, package, right? So I hope this answers the question at least a little bit. Can, can I jump in and say something? Uh, because I have seen when like mature, well-written in production R code uh, uh, has not been set up say properly, which is very normal. Uh, <laughs> and I would say that the moment some of this functionality seems useful, start using that functionality and you don't have to use everything. Mm. It's not, you have to have tests for everything. You have to have everything passing R, CMD check. But if no. you use some of it, it starts being more useful. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a very, very good point. And as I said, for example, tests are are very time consuming, but especially in, in a production setting, right? It can, it can save you a little bit uh, also to, to explore or to identify breaking changes before they actually happen. So there's, there's a clear benefit to it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we can, if, if you have follow up questions, uh, I'm not sure, Vipin Kumar, um, I can unmute you or. Uh, but we have a few other questions. So is it a good idea to clarify what other functions your when X miss depends on by way of import? Um, it's, it, 
I didn't totally get uh, get what the question was here. So when we specify the function and our own handwritten function uh, called um, functions from other packages, like in this case from the Lubridate package, right? Mm -hmm. um, we specify which functions are being imported uh, in the comments of the whence Xmas R file to make sure that these, not only these functions, but especially the package is part of the namespace file, which also informs the description file. So we make sure that whenever we want to install, for example, the once Christmas package, Lubridate gets installed as well. And of, so that essentially yeah. is done via uh, Roxygen writing something to the namespace. And that's what does it. Yes, Fantastic. yes. That's okay. the uh, Roxygen2 Roxygenize uh, function that does all the magic. And uh, just a quick follow-up comment here that um, often when writing functions for a package, it's more useful to actually uh, not load an entire package like you would do with, say, for example, library Lubridate, but specify like the precise function you want to have from the package. That's a bit of a good practice uh, when coding for packages, especially when some functions or the name of the uh, functions share the same name across packages. Like a famous example is when you load a dplyr uh, and because you want the filter function, but then the filter function from the stats base R package doesn't work anymore. So uh, that's also uh, an additional case here. So we have another question from Kathleen uh, that she recently tried to test that and yeah. it wasn't clear how to use it with ongoing projects, which are not yet packages. Could you give an example? And she says she settled on assertions because I was mostly working with linear code instead of functions. Was it a good choice? Yeah, um, test that is, I mean, especially developed for, uh, for use in package development, but you can also use it uh, in project work uh, that is not related to package development. I personally must admit that I've only used it in the context of package development, so I can I cannot really comment on that. But uh, to to initially base the tests on assertions is is a great way to start until you figure out where these where these tests may lead you into a false uh, security feeling, right? Sounds great. I, I think that's all for now. All right, perfect. Um, then I'll just continue. Let me just click here. So now we are, uh, we are talking about tests and tests are a tough, tough topic. Um, but again, this is a, this presentation here is not meant to, to like cover all the, the tests. And um, as I said, in, in this instance here, uh, we will use the uh, functionality from the test that package. Um, but I've also used a tiny test package in the past, which comes with a few less dependencies, et cetera. Um, so it is actually quite interesting. So make sure to keep an eye out also for tiny tests. Right. Um, so when we set up this, uh, these tests using the use underscore tests uh, function, again, the use this package takes care of all the dirty work of setting up everything, but it will not uh, take care of actually writing the tests. Uh, that's uh, the one thing it doesn't do. Um, but it gives you an example dummy file right away that you can then uh, edit and write tests to your liking or for what's necessary for your project or package. For example, here I wrote five very, very simple tests. All of those tests in test that, or most of them uh, are wrapped into a so-called expect function 
And since we expect the output of our once Christmas uh, function to be a message, uh, I wrapped it into the expect message function. And then it simply checks for the first four that it receives a message when running it without input, when giving it a specific date input. And in the end, the last one expects an error if we provide uh, a wrong character string that cannot be parsed into a date. So this is a quick, quick example here of how you could possibly write uh, write tests. Uh, often you you want to make sure that your functions maybe return a number. Then you would say expect uh, expect double, or there are other things like expect identical. There's a lot of good information also in the writing R packages book that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, so make sure to read up on that. And there are a bunch of great talks on YouTube on that. It's it's really a topic for for an entire week of presentations. Right. And then the great thing is within our studio on the upper right, at least the way I have set up my R studio, uh, within the build uh, section, you can run the tests immediately if you click on more and then test package. And then it will run these tests and will let you know if any of these uh, tests failed, if there's a warning or if it skipped some tests and also the number of tests that passed. In this case, all five tests passed with like blazing glory for once. Uh, it's probably unrealistic to show this picture of the output of a test. More often or not, you see uh, tests failing horribly, but then you get very informative uh, warning and error messages that help you track down why tests failed and what you need to do with your functions. So it is really useful. Right. Let's move a bit away from the tests for now and go back to the like single big files that are associated with the project. Um, there's the big description file uh, that is automatically generated when you generate a project. And there you can also uh, give additional information yourself. For example, uh, the title, the author, maintainer, and the description but it automatically gets populated with information on, for example, the license, which other packages it imports, suggestions, et cetera, based on what you use. And speaking of license, that's, a, that's another relatively hot topic, but there is again a great functionality in the use this package, the use <laughs> license uh, functionality that creates a license file and markdown document uh, with it. Uh, and in this case, I added an MIT license. And so it automatically creates all of these license files. If you're like me, just a humble, humble natural scientist that doesn't know uh, his way in the world of licenses, there's a great website called choosealicense.com, which can help you choosing the right license. Uh, but as usual, I would say, ask a person you know uh, or that knows about licenses. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier on that nowadays it's also relatively en vogue uh, to have a news file as part of your package. So it's easier to track what changes have been happening in the development of a package. And again, the use this package comes with a use news MD function that creates a news MD file, unsurprisingly. And there you can automatically start or you can directly start typing, uh, typing away what the different changes were. In this case, I uh, added the basic package yesterday and updated it today. Then one of the more important parts when you have your package on GitHub is the readme file, because that's being rendered. That's what people can read. That's where you can get your message, your point across, right? And surely you have figured out that there is also use this function for this <laughs> as well. 
use readme rmd which creates the readme r markdown file and that file you can render into the um, uh, into the readme markdown file exactly and it also adds uh, the r markdown file to uh, uh, r build ignore and writes a hook into uh, the git folder so that's great and then you have a readme r markdown file that you can actually edit yourself like any regular markdown file and you see here in in the line starting at 18 to uh, 21 there are some batches here and that looks like like a lot of code here but these are the continuous integration uh, batches does it does it pass uh, our command uh, tests uh, what's the code coverage etc and Conveniently enough, the continuous integration uh, can be added to the project. You probably guessed it with uh, some use this functions. In this case, I'll just uh, demonstrate uh, how to use the use GitHub Actions uh, continuous integration and how to get the coverage using the code cup uh, functionality here or the use coverage functionality. Uh, so before you get into that, yeah. uh, maybe I'll just ask another question from the chat. So does the presented workflow for this package development cover all the requirements to be able to release the developed package onto CRAN? Or are there additional uh -huh. conditions to fulfill? I think there's a use this for this. Yeah, um, uh, there, there are additional things uh, to consider before uh, moving it to CRAN, I mean, especially with the, when it comes to continuous uh, integration, like and checking that it works on platforms, et cetera. There is a, a lot to consider, um, but this is a bit outside the scope of, uh, of this presentation now. And I, again, I can, I can only uh, rec or I can't recommend enough reading uh, through the awesome book from uh, Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan on writing R packages where there's a, an entire uh, chapter, if I remember this correctly, on writing tests and getting it uh, onto CRAN. So that's, but very good question, very important. Yeah. I think that's all for now. All right, perfect. Uh, so we go into a continuous integration now and until a few, like one or two years ago, like something happened during the last two years that my feeling of time isn't quite right um but it was quite common to to have things like uh circle ci and travis to make sure that your uh your projects uh integrate on different platforms like on linux on windows on mac etc but now github has introduced github actions that basically takes care of all of that in one platform uh, and that's a really elegant way of doing it. And again, with use this, is, it's as simple as use GitHub Actions here. Um, and I will not go into details on what you can actually modify in these YAML files. There is a lot you can do. You can specify which platforms, etc., which versions of R so on and so forth to test uh, against. And this is also leaning towards getting it into CRAN, right? Um, but again, the R package book has great detail on it. The cool thing is it automatically, when running the use GitHub actions function, it automatically adds the R command check batch to the readme file. And the same thing happens when you add the code coverage, actually. I don't have a slide for it right now, but uh, you will then later on in your, when you have it up and running, uh, get your uh, small little batches here. And it's always nice to get something green popping up there. And it's good when you have a package with only one function, so you can actually get the 100% code coverage. Doesn't always happen. Now, 
the next uh, few slides are like the three important parts that are left now. That's again, testing the package functionality, checking that the package can be built and then installing the package. We're testing the package with test that functionality. We're checking uh, that the package can be built with our command check and we'll install with the remote package. So first we run the test and we've seen this before, it looks great. All tests pass, which also means that now we can go and run our command check, which runs on for a lot more lines uh, than what I screenshotted here. Um, but it's always good to first check that all tests pass because a failing test will automatically cause our command check to fail as well. And when our command check uh, comes out without complaining, then you can start installing the package, which I've done here. But uh, of course, it's not enough to just uh, install the package locally and just have it for yourself. As I said, it is also about sharing with others. So I absolutely uh, would urge you to commit all your changes, push all your changes over to GitHub. So you always have like an up-to-date version of your package. In this case, the When's Christmas package is on my GitHub repository. You can actually install it if you want via the remotes package uh, and the install GitHub functionality and check it out. You can open issues now, etc. So it really brings everything together. And last but not least, we now know it's only nine days until Christmas. So with this, I would like to thank you um, and I'll be here for one or two more questions.